أعزائي المشاهدين نقدم هذا البرنامج من MEA TV تحية مقدم هذا البرنامج أنا اسمي وليد جمو المستشار النفسي وخبير في علاج الإدمان على الكحول والمخدرات في المجلس العربي الأمريكي والكلداني تأسس المجلس العربي الأمريكي والكلداني سنة 1979 برئاسة الدكتورة هيفا فخوري وابتدأ من مكتب صغير في ديترويت إلى حوالي 39 ل 40 مكتب يقدم في خدمات إنسانية في المقاطعات الثلاثة هذه الخدمات هي كثيرة سأذكر بعضها تعليم اللغة الإنجليزية خدمات الصحة النفسية خدمات الترجمة والتوظيف والتدريب المهني البرامج التعليمية الرياضية للشباب والشابات التوعية وورشات العمل الاجتماعية خدمات الصحة العامة خدمات الويك بروجرام برامج التغذية خدمات مكافحة التدخين والكحول والمخدرات وخدمات كثيرة تقدم في المواقع الجغرافية من مقاطعة وين وأوكلند وماكوم الرجاء زيارة موقعنا الخاص للتعرف على الخدمات المقدمة مع العناوين والتلفونات على www.myacc.org ولأي سؤال أو استفسار الرجاء الاتصال في المجلس العربي الأمريكي والكلداني السيد وليد جمو على الرقم التالي 248-559-1990 سنقدم في هذا البرنامج اليوم واخترنا لكم مضار الأرجيلة والتدخين على الصحة العامة وخاصة الشبيبة وأطلب من الأهالي الآن الرجاء إذا كان في إمكانية أن يكونوا أولادكم موجودين لأنه سنتكلم باللغة الإنجليزية في بعض الأسئلة سنتكلم معظمها باللغة الإنجليزية وضيفي في هذا اليوم السيد فؤاد بطايح من المجلس العربي الأمريكي والكلداني فؤاد is a prevention specialist with ACC and has been for many years They, we have a program called the hookah and tobacco cessation program he's very active in the community and uh, هو متخصص في برامج الوقاية بالنسبة للأرجيلة والتدخين والتوقف وإعطاء معلومات هامة في هذه الليلة في هذا البرنامج عن موضوع الأرجيلة وتأثيرها على الصحة العامة اهلا فيك اخ فؤاد يا ريت اي ويش يو كان جيف اس ا ليتل بيت اباوت يور سيلف اند ذا سيرفيسز يو بروفايد ثرو اي سي سي يا اوف كورس ثانك يو فور هافينج مي ان جيفينج مي ذا اوبورتونيتي تو ديسكاس ا فيري بيرتنت ايشو اسبيشلي ويثن ذا ارب امريكان بوبوليشن اند امونج امونج اور يوث سو اي جست وانت ثانك يو فور فور جيفينج اس ذس تايم اي بين ويز اي سي سي ناو فور اباوت اولموست 10 ييرز Uh, within the prevention program, especially and uh, the tobacco and hookah cessation uh, programming, where we also focus on on e-cigarettes, which I think we've already discussed. We're going to be having another, hopefully, session on that. Um, but uh, it's been a, a great opportunity doing this work and being able to work with youth in particular uh, about and kind of informing them. Uh, you know how bad of a habit this really is. Uh, the purpose tonight and this uh, program is to educate about the hookah and tobacco and its impact on health, especially the young people. Especially the young people. Uh, we know for a fact that uh, this hookah or argila has become a fashionable uh, activity mm -hmm. for uh, this century, the 21st century. The families uh, are, uh, and uh, when they gather, they even have it in their own cars. They carry it to the wedding, they carry it in their car, in the trunk. To the park. To the park, yeah. to yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, is there a safe way of smoking hookah? No. No, there's, there's no safe way of using any tobacco uh, products. And of course, this answer is uh, very general. We are going to dive in and talk more about the details yeah. of hookah impacts. Yeah. Tell us, if you can, uh, how many people smoke hookah in, 
if, if it is possible in maybe at, at the com community at large and maybe specifically in our community. So when we're talking about, um, you know, the population uh, in Michigan, uh, tobacco use in Michigan uh, is about anywhere from 18 to 20 percent as of the last study that was done. But so we're talking 18 to 20 percent out, out of the 10 th million people who are living in the state of Michigan. This is in, in Michigan. Yeah. Wow. A national rate is about 17. 17 percent. But within the Arab population uh, in particular, we smoke at a rate of about 34 percent. Wow, double that. So double the national rate. So we are called a smoking chimney or uh, we just we're heavy, heavy, heavy smokers. users, heavy users, yeah. heavy users of smoking and yeah. uh, smoking uh, tobacco and argila and, 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 and the hookah. Yep. Yeah. The 34 percent number is uh, in regards to hookah in particular. Um, tobacco, we're at, uh, we're, there's been a slight drop. Um, you know, we're close to the national average on traditional tobacco cigarettes, but hookah, we're at 34 percent, which is wow. double. The, what's the what's rate. the reason for jumping from, let's say, the 17, 18 percent of tobacco smoking as the national uh, statistics uh, in, uh, uh, to the hookah? What, what, why the double? The cultural acceptance of smoking hookah uh, among the Arab population is, is a big factor. Um, so it's becoming a moda? It pretty much. Uh, like a fashion? Yeah, it's a fashion. It's now been accepted as part of the Arab culture something that just Arab do. Okay. Um, so a lot of, you know, and especially when we're talking about youth, a lot of parents, for example, won't get upset at their children smoking <coughs> hookah, mm. but will get upset at their children smoking traditional cigarettes. Uh, so, so that's just why... A, a culture of acceptance that, that needs that to be That cultural addressed. of acceptance is a, is a way of a, a segue into the... How common is it for young people to, to use it? Uh, so actually, the highest rate of use is among the 18 to 24 year old okay. age group. Okay. Um, so what's so the, what's the per what's the stat? What's the the 34 percent also still? Yeah, still. So when you talk into uh, an age group where you move beyond 24 years old, it drops to 26 percent. Above 45 years old, uh, the the rate drops even more, but the highest rate of use is the 18 to 24. 18 to 24. Mm -hmm. 18 to 24 yep. percent. Yep. And that's and that's because we were only allowed to survey people of legal smoking age uh, and just our general What's questions. the legal smoking age here? 18. 18. In Michigan. In Michigan. Um, but in talking to students and youth at schools, when we go out to various schools and we conduct our tobacco program, um, you know, it's that number anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of students not even at the smoking age have mm. been exposed to some sort of hookah use, whether they've tried it once or tried it from a parent or a relative. Um, you know, we've had numbers as high as 50 So you're telling me that eighth graders. the 34 percent, yani Baba and Mama, when they smoke hookah, when they have it in the car, when they are sitting with their kids, they say, yeah, Baba, khud ya habibi, smoke like shwa. We've, we've had instances of that, yeah. So A lot of, yani a lot of people have reported that their first time using hookah was with family. With family. Yeah. So actually, they, they, the start is with family. So we are actually triggering a, a behavior at home or in the park or in the wedding, and then after that, the kids or the young people between Continue. 18 to 24, they begin to just yeah, use it freely. Because now yeah. they know that the message has been sent that it's, it's okay. an acceptable behavior. Yeah, and Baba and Mama Bugulu, okay, they, so they stamp it. Yeah. So they stamp it, and this leads to the 34 to percent yeah. of addiction. Yeah. Is it addictive? Yes. Why? Yeah. How? Um, How is it addictive? So you know, contrary to popular belief, hookah does contain nicotine. It does contain tar. Yes. Um, Please let me let 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 them know. Let them know because I'm I'm sort of animated <laughs> here, and 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 and, and I really want to get this message out yeah. because there is a lot of myths and misconception. There is. There is. Uh, um, so look them up in the eye and yeah. and tell Baba and Mama and tell 
جدو ان جدا تل Arabic and Chaldean community, yeah. we, we love them, but we want to tell them about the facts. Yeah, hookah does contain nicotine, uh, it does contain tar. Uh, it does also contain about 69 other heavy metals that are considered carcinogens uh, and about 4,800 other tobacco uh, chemicals similar to those found in tobacco. 4,800 chemicals is found in the... In the smoke itself. In the smoke itself. In the smoke itself, especially uh, because the charcoal actually contributes to that. Okay. Too, um, you know, about ten times higher levels of carbon monoxide due to the charcoal heating the tobacco. So really, this is hookah. The misconception is, is it safe? It's it's really not it's safe. It's not. No. And we're talking about the nitty gritty of what's going on with hookah and how the hookah puffs and and yeah. what comes the yeah, carcinogen. They've, they've actually done done studies so this yes. is where they get these numbers from so i mean people have gone to the extent of creating machines that can calibrate draw times on a cigarette and you know how many puffs you take and, and how many the allotted time uh so what they've found is that so in a cigarette for example yeah. you end up inhaling by the time you're done smoking a cigarette uh, about 0.5 liters of smoke and that goes in into a, you in a cigarette. In a cigarette. Yeah. Uh, whereas the hookah with the hookah, in each puff, you inhale almost a liter of smoke. So one puff is almost double one cigarette. Wow. So that's why they have that number where you know you usually see people say that sixty minutes of hookah exposure is equivalent to about a hundred cigarettes. That's actually been uh, a scientific so number. So the family, when they sit down, they don't pay attention to the time. Right. We take off the time, basically, and we yeah. say, now it's time for us to smoke hookah. Yeah. So you're telling me 60 minutes of this. 60 minutes. 60 minutes, which is the average. You know, that is 100 cigarettes? Yeah, that's equivalent to about 100 cigarettes, and that's the same amount of exposure of nicotine and, and tar and all those other heavy metals that that cause cancer. What does nicotine do to the development of the stages of development? So nicotine itself is, uh, as we know, a stimulant. It's an yes. addictive stimulant. It's an addictive stimulant that they've found as as hard of a habit to break as heroin. They always um, say in Arabic, yeah. Yani in the beginning, <laughs> they sort of it's it's a uh, play time, and right. then eventually it becomes routine, and eventually the cigarettes or the nicotine or the hookah, uh, we take take it first, and then it takes us later on. It controls right. us, and it does. Um, you know, quitting nicotine has a lot of side effects. There are withdrawal symptoms to it: moodiness, headaches, nausea, aggression, um, aggression. So uh, it does. It does have comes with its own set of. So let's say the family is sitting down and smoking hookah, and uh, the kids are taking a puff here and there. And some of the other kids they say we don't like the taste of it. So, but mm -hmm. they're sitting there. What? What is that? That's a second hand. So this second hand smoke. Uh, there have been some studies. Um, they are very similar uh, to that of. Tobacco. Yes. Uh, they haven't studied it as extensively, obviously, with the, yet with the hookah. As far as side stream smoke, there have been studies done that do find, um, again, these amounts of, you know, heavy metals that are cancer-causing agents, especially yes. when it comes to pancreatic can pancreatic cancer, uh, lung cancer, uh, are the two most pro prominent. Uh, so. How does smoking hookah affect pregnant women? Uh, low birth rate. Is low birth rate. Low low birth weight is a huge uh, factor. So and and low birth weight actually uh, impacts the the stages of development. It, it could delay and health after birth. So there's also been respiratory problems that have been linked like to asthma infant, and infants. And yep, and unfortunately, sudden infant death syndrome and things like that. Okay. What are some of the short and long-term effects of smoking hookah? Uh, so hookah is one of those things that they've done studies at five 
minute intervals okay. of smoking hookah. Okay. And as soon as five minutes into smoking hookah, they've seen some effects as far as increased heart rate, uh, increased uh, blood pressure. Yeah, and you're telling me hatto al machines. Yep. They put it on the machine yeah. and they measured, they measured after five minutes. After five minutes. Okay. Uh, as soon as five minutes into smoking hookah. These things began to happen to the body, to, to the heart? Yes. Sh what happened? So basically the heart rate increases. Okay. Um, they've also seen long-term effects, uh, the, arterial, the arterial walls yes. thickening, uh, thickening to as much as someone that might suffer from hypertension for years. Uh, whereas a healthy person, a non-smoker, won't have that thickening if they mm. don't have hypertension. So uh, some people say we inhale it. Some people say they don't inhale it. Some people tell us what's what's this all about? Uh, I mean, y you're smoking the, uh, the either either way you're you're breathing. You're breathing it. So you're breathing it. So uh, this so this the really argument. I'm not inhaling it into my lungs. Yeah, it's a moot. I'm just it's it's right here by my. Yeah, uh, it's a moot point. It's so yeah. it doesn't uh, it doesn't really change the the fact is the fact or the exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's an unhealthy behavior that carries risk. Uh, several studies have found that maybe this is a gateway to some other drugs. W w what's, your imp what's your take on this? Uh, personally, I mean, any substance use can always lead to, to other substances. Yeah. And we've seen this with whether it be hookah, whether it's tobacco, whether it's marijuana. Um, you know, when you've become comfortable with a substance, you can always justify And you can jump from one another to another and, and back, jump from back and forth. Another. Is it, is addiction to hookah and tobacco, they say as addictive to heroin, cocaine, and, and or even alcohol? It's the uh, nicotine itself, yeah. Nicotine, nicotine itself. Nicotine itself is, is addictive. Uh, you know, with hookah, it's a little bit different because it's not just the nicotine that's addictive it's the behavior itself can yeah. become addictive. It's a social thing. So we're do. talking about physical addiction. Mm -hmm. We're talking about psychological addiction. Right. And we're talking about societal addiction. Yeah. So really the, 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 the segue... Multifaceted with, with hookah. With uh, hookah. It's a lot different than cigarettes. You know, cigarettes, you have things that contribute to helping people quit or keeping people abstained. There are smoke-free air laws. It's now not as socially acceptable. It's not yeah. viewed as a cool thing to do. There are policies that has been... Right. Whereas uh, hookah, you know, you can go almost anywhere and it's acceptable to smoke yeah. hookah. Someone might not let you smoke a cigarette in their house, but, but they'll let you smoke a hookah in their house. Because of misperception. Right. And the misperception is that it's not as harmful. harmful. It uh, doesn't smell as bad. Yeah, they have know. so many, uh, they call it masal, uh, right. uh, flavors, flavors and, yeah. and all these things, they come in, and those are like banana flavor. There is yeah. um, uh, ragi flavor. Everything. You, you think Watermelon, about, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> strawberry. Yeah. Wow, and, and all these are camouflaged in the big carcinogens. Yeah. that really are in still present 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 there and yeah. we can't we can't close our eyes we, we no. just can't yeah. you know we cannot not really begin to look with open minds to try to to create a dialogue about it and actually to begin to tackle those kinds of issues yeah, and a lot of it is just informing people um, because there are so many myths yeah you know I remember someone you know more than once frequently here oh the water in the hookah is a filter Whereas that's not true at all. The water does nothing but s cool down the smoke so you can continue to smoke longer. You know, I'm looking at all of this and I'm seeing how much uh, financial gain we can, or, you know, commercializing it. Yeah. And, and people are just, they have to really uh, sort of make stands on these kinds of issues, uh, whether uh, it, it's it's going to be the, the gain financially more than the they don't pay attention to the health issues or even take a stand on the health issues right. and, and really 
dictate other kind of programs in all of our settings, yeah. wherever we are. Fuad, I'm, I'm just Im impressed with the kind of information you have and the, the kind of information that you shared as a young man. Uh, you can relate to the young people. We are getting older a little bit. Yeah. But I, I want to ask, uh, any surveys or studies that has been done in our community? Yes, so actually a lot of these numbers that we discussed here today, uh, yeah. they did come from a study that was conducted in 2017 uh, on the Arab American population uh, only. Okay. Uh, you know, about 2,000, a little over 2,000 uh, Arab Americans were surveyed. So we've done surveys, Estimarat, Abuha, Al Arab, Wil Kildan, Al Mojudin Hona in Michigan, in the state yes. of Michigan. Yep. 2,000 people. Yeah, a little over 2,000 uh, were, were surveyed, all again 18 and older. Uh, who are your coalitions? I'm, I'm sure you guys uh, collaborate with other... Yeah, uh, we, uh, uh, so the state of Michigan itself uh, has been very helpful uh, okay. in implementing a lot of these programs and in funding a lot of prevention efforts. Uh, we also partner with Tobacco Free Michigan. We partner with uh, Henry Ford Healthcare Systems. Yes. Uh, we even partner with uh, you know other agencies serving in the American community like access and, yes. and others uh, uh, something can we bring something to show the families here actual hookah and have the and, and have some scientifically uh, show them and, and give a showcase of yeah. the impact of it on the health and the lungs and and, and you know the, the whole body I, I guess yes actually there's been uh, a lot of universities that have done studies uh, Harvard UCLA uh, AUB, the yeah. American University in, in Lebanon. Uh, Can we bring University them in Beirut. and just um, really show them, show people? They're, right? yeah, they are. They're accessible. Uh, actually, uh, someone from the AUB just presented at uh, one of the health summits that we had in Washington, D.C. Uh, so these people are accessible, and it's something that we're actually working on to get these presentations out there. Is there adequate funding in the community, will, or we need Bidna Kaman? We need more. We need, of course, we this is a, a, need more. a shortage um, area. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, the state of Michigan itself, uh, it, you know, spends less than most other states yeah. out there. Uh, they don't spend anywhere near the amount needed uh, to get people to quit. So we want to encourage the families to start paying attention to what they're doing uh, and, and looking at the facts and the harmful s and the side effect of, of, of this. Not just only the families, but really places like you know our restaurants our parks parks church festivals church festivals yeah. mosques yeah. Uh, all these kinds of institutions faith-based institution just to try to begin uh, we are ready to come to your places of worship and and uh, places where you meet and we're we're willing to share those kinds of facts and and do demonstrations and do workshops and help people begin to understand so we can combat uh, we need your collaboration and we, we want to cooperate with you. So we are open. And because of that, we want to uh, thank you so much for the uh, information that you have shared uh, as an ACC staff and a prevention specialist, a young person. Give us your advice uh, for the, the people who are watching right now. Uh, it's small steps. So like you had mentioned, you know, we need to start with the community and with faith-based organizations and other areas where people socialize. No. Yes. Uh, you know, if these places make it something not acceptable to do at their social venues, it'll slowly uh, change the attitude towards smoking hookah. And any of this information can, you know, we'll make sure to put it up on our website. Uh, uh, the ACC the website. ACC website. Is there is there something called Quit, quit Now One Eight Hundred? Yeah. So the state of Michigan actually does offer a quit line. Yes. that has personal coaches, they have Arabic speaking coaches, and they actually have uh, nicotine replacement therapy available uh, to people. The 1-800-QUIT now. 1-800-QUIT now. Quit now. The 1-800-QUIT now, 1-800-784-8669. With can fi and any stifsar, any questions you have, please visit our website at www.myacc.org. 
وإذا في عندكم أي استفسارات الرجاء الاتصال مع السيد وليد قمه أو مع فؤاد بطايح في المجلس العربي الأمريكي والكلداني على 248559-1990 I want to extend my appreciation on ACC's, on ACC's behalf uh, and continue to uh, support your program and please if there is any kind of information that you is needed in the community we are willing to come to your home <laughs> and even educate in your places where you, wherever you are thank you for your uh, listening uh, اترككم بعون الله ورعايته وشكرا من اجل حسن استماعكم <تصفيق>